Good morning, everyone, and welcome to ThunderBayTrees.ca. I'm Jay Dampier, your host, and today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, tree nutrition and why um, happy soils and why the proper nutrients in your soils are important for happy trees. Now, one of the key ways to be able to do that, uh, it's actually quite simple, is to take a soil test. And you do that by you know, taking a bunch of samples of soil um, in and around your tree where the roots would be, and then submitting it, getting it tested, and then from there you can figure out um, if your tree is lacking any nutrients and then kind of moving forward and applying fertilizers and things like that. But the first question is where would you want to um, take the soil from? So if this is a tree here, um, here's the trunk, and there's the soil line, you can kind of see that, right? Um, you want to take from within the drip line. So if this is the tree, here's the crown of the tree, here's the trunk, here's the, the, the soil surface. If you kind of imagine your tree as a big umbrella and water running off it, the drip line is this area from each edge of the crown and everything within it. That's the drip line. And then what you want to do is take a whole bunch of samples from within this drip line. Um, so you take a bunch, mix it up in a bucket, and then submit it to a soil testing laboratory. There's a few in Ontario. Um, pretty much every state in the United States has one at their land-grant university. And uh, what I'm going to do right now is just show you how to do it. I'll uh, show you how to, I'm going to dig a little hole in my lawn here. And uh, we're going to be measuring, uh, a, or getting, sorry, getting a soil sample to be submitted for this tree right back behind me here, behind the shovel there. Um, that's an elm tree. So let's see if this works. So let's see, can you see me? I think so. So you want to take a number of samples. Um, Take a bunch of little sh kind of slivers out of the out of the soil, and what you're looking to do is go down. This isn't quite deep enough, but go down about six inches or so, because within let's see here, within within the um, so most of the roots are going to be. Um, in the top six to eight inches or so, and that's where you, where you want to get your nutrients from, or sorry, get your soil from, because that's what, that's where your the nutrients that you're most interested in are going to be. That's where the tree is going to be uptaking that. Now, when you submit your sample, you want to make sure to pick out any you know vegetation, any roots. You want to try to get most of the roots out. That'll be sieved out in the lab if you don't do it yourself. And uh, so in this case, I would just kind of kind of kind of crumble off some of that. And to kind of work at that, you know, knock, knock that down, and then do a number of samples. So this tree here, this elm tree, is probably has a width of about um, 30 feet, uh, a kind of a crown width of about 30 feet. So for a tree this size, you, know, you, you might want to, if you're feeling really ambitious, um, maybe 20 or 30 samples. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's pretty quick to do. Um, but also being realistic. <laughs> I realize most people won't actually do that many. And also in this case, this is right on my property line. I'm not gonna sneak over into my neighbor's yard and uh, take some of the samples over there. So I may try to concentrate on my area because that's really the only area I can do anything with anyway. I'm not gonna go sneak over and fertilize the other side of, of the fence line um, either. So, um, so, so that's sort of it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bunch of samples and then, whoa, and then after the samples are taken, I'm going to pick all these little bits of lawn out and um, you know, put a number of samples in, mix it up, and then submit it in a kind of a Ziploc bag. And I can bring that. I'm going to bring it to the local laboratory here in Thunder Bay at, the, uh, at Lakehead University. And I'll give you some information on that. Um, I'll put it in the, in the website, on the website underneath the, uh, the actual video. So in a couple of weeks, what I'll do is when I get the results, we'll talk about them online and, and perhaps maybe I'll get uh, Joel who is the uh, soil manager over there um, to join me on the show. Now there are a few things that I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing in that soil report. There's a few things that are measured. So pH, the acidity, uh, we're going to look at that, see how acidic these soils are for this tree. Uh, we're going to look at micronutrients and macronutrients. The report will talk a little bit about that. So um, micronutrients are nutrients that plants need in very small quantities, something like, I don't know, copper or uh, calcium I think is another one. My macronutrients are not necessarily big nutrients versus small nutrients, but rather nutrients that plants need in big quantity or little quantity. 
So things like nitrogen, potassium, uh, phosphorus, those are, those are macronutrients, those are nutrients that trees need in large quantity. We'll also be on the report, we'll see how much organic matter is in the soil, because organic matter is also an indication of um, general soil health, it's an indication of how well the soil will hold onto nutrients, um, and also moisture as well, and again, key things for happy plants. And then there also will be, you know, I'm thinking there's something else on that report, organic matter, um, hmm, I th I'm thinking there's something else that I can't think of right now. Oh, soil texture, sand, silt, or clay. Sands are big particles, silts are kind of medium particles, and, and, and clays are tiny little particles. We're going to take a look at that because those two are an indication of how happy your soil is and how well that soil will be able to sustain plant life. I'm Jay for thunderbaytrees.ca.